flooding. The picture on the left is, um, is Tewkesbury. It um, was in the floods in 2007, I think. A large number of floods throughout the United Kingdom, uh, in Scotland just before Christmas last year as well, I think. Um, Hull, Rotherham. The picture on the right is my hometown, actually. It's in, in Rotherham. And we have to try and work out what do we do to defend cities like this against floods. Um, so the situation is a bit like this. We've got um, a catchment, which is the area that is drained by a river. We have a place where there might be some flooding, which might in this case be somewhere around here. Um, when it rains up here, I, I, we can either be very clever and develop models that tell us what the flow will be here due to rain here. Quite clever mathematics involved in that. Um, but on the other hand, we might do something a lot simpler than that. We might just have some data. We might have collected river level data here, and we know that at certain levels of the river at this point here, there's flooding at this point here. It's overtopping whatever flood defences we've got. So I want you to imagine that at the moment, the walls or the flood level that we need to worry about is 20 metres at some particular place above some datum, they're not 20 metres high above this floor level, they're just 20 metres high above some arbitrary datum. And if we get flows that are higher than that particular level of 20 metres, we'll get some flooding. And I can work out by looking at some past records that um, the damage is obviously proportional to by how much the real f f river level is higher than the flood wall level. So I'm going to assume, just for purposes of today, that um, it's 10 times the height difference, in, but measured in millions of pounds. So that's the, that's the damage that will, be, will occur every time the river goes above 20 metres at the moment, because that's the, um, that's the level we're at at the minute, we'll get 10 times that difference. And if I increase the height of the wall, obviously the, the damage will be less. The only, so you think, well, how big should the wall be? And quite often students will say, well, you make it as big, so there's no damage. You do it bigger than any flow has ever been down the river, then there's no damage. There's only one slight problem to that, and that is we can't afford to. So we have to trade off some flood damage against the cost of building the wall, because building this stuff is not cheap. And in this example, I'm going to assume that the cost of building a wall raising that wall from 20 metres to some other height, h, is proportional to the difference, but to a power. It's to a power of 1.1. So two very simple assumptions. They're not, uh, for any particular case you go to, you'd have to look in more detail at what they would be. And, um, and then we need to decide how high the wall should be. What's the best value of h? Anybody know I'm going to do that? Do you want me to show you? Okay, here's some data. Here's some river data. This is, um, for most records, this is actually data from the United States as it happens, but um, you can get data from this country as well. I just find this a lot easier to pick up. This is the biggest flood level in a river every year. So I've got 70 years worth of data here. It starts in 1940, and the biggest flood in 1940 was 16 meters. That was the biggest level in the river in this year here, which is 1965. The flood level was 27 and a half meters. And you can see that at the minute I've got a flood wall of 20 meters high. So all these, that one, 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 all of these, all of these will have caused some flood damage. So what I want to do is I want to raise that wall so I get less. See, if I raise it that much, I get fewer floods, so that's what I want to do. How do we do that? Okay, well, this is the... Um, I, I showed you what the flood damage would be if it was bigger than a certain height. And what I've done is I've gone through the record and said, okay, well, if it was at 20 where it's at now, which is here, I can, I can go through this flood record, find how many floods there were and how big they were, 
and then I can put each one of them into that equation and calculate how much damage each one would have occurred. And then I can say, well, okay, that's, uh, I've got about 29 floods there. Um, so that's over 69 years. So I can work out the average annual flood damage per year. And that turns out to be about 8 million. So if I leave the wall where it is, what I'll need to do is I'll need to find 8 million pounds from somebody to pay for the flood damage, because on average, that's what I'm going to need every year. Some years I'll need more than that. Some years I won't need any of it. But on average, over the 70 years, I've had so many floods, I'm going to need about 8 million. If I go up to... Remember, the biggest one here was 27 and a half. If I build it that high, then you can see I don't get any damage. So I'm in there somewhere. And if I look at every other height, I can do that same calculation and show you what the flood damage will be. So that's how much the, the damage is going to cost me, if I, depending on how I build this wall. So what I want to do now is to calculate what the cost of the wall will be. And the cost of the flood wall, using that equation of uh, height minus 20 to the power 1.1, uh, will give these annual flood defence costs. Now, has anybody got an idea what the optimum height of the wall is now? Anybody like to guess what the answer is going to be? Hmm? Where the two lines meet. How many people think it's where the two lines meet? How many people don't think it's where the two lines meet? Well, the five of you who think it's not where the two lines meet are right. And the rest of you are wrong. And the reason you're wrong is because... They're just two separate costs. And what I want to do is I want to add the costs together. So I'm now going to add these curves together and find out what the total cost is. And you can see it's not where the two lines meet. It's where, it's, it's where the cost is a minimum. The minimum is here, 22 and a half metres. And don't, don't be worried if you thought it was where the two lines meet because every student, even postgraduate students, I've given this lecture to, they nearly always say the same, because it's the kind of obvious, intuitive thing to say. But it's, there are some examples when it is, just purely because of the, the way the equations are set up. But in general, it's not where the two lines meet, it's where the total cost is a minimum. So in this case, it happens to be there. Okay, uh, 